Today on this 2010 Mini Cooper hardtop, we're going to install part number 11160 from Kurt. First step involved in this is go ahead and we need to remove the whole entire bumper cover to the vehicle. First thing we need to do is open the back hatch and there'll be two screws underneath that to uh, remove. What we're going to do next is take off the rear tires. You don't have to do this, but it just makes things easier to see what's going on. Next thing we need to do is get behind the fender liner here because there's some fasteners for the bumper cover. So there's one, two, three fasteners we can remove to give us access. This wire harness going to the running light here. We'll have to disconnect that also. Push down a little button, it comes right apart. And then we need to get access to this fastener right here. And basically it's just a little plastic rivet. Split it apart, it should come apart. And you can see how the bumper cover is now separated from the rear arch. Now we're gonna repeat back over on the driver's side. Still working with the fender well here, what we need to do next is then snap this trim piece from the bumper cover. Kinda gotta push up that way in a way. And then we got one screw right here that we need to undo. On some models, probably on the Cooper S, we'll have two screws. On this model right here, this regular Mini Cooper, looks like it only has one bolt to remove right here. Now that we have all our fasteners removed, we can go ahead and remove our bumper cover. And now, what happens is we got to remove this part of a bumper structure right here. All right, before I take the bumper structure off, we're going to release the clips that will hold the wiring to the bumper structure. And this foam here has a little electrical component that fits inside here. I believe that's going to come off with the bumper structure, so we'll go ahead and remove this component. All right, let's go ahead and give the hitch a test fit now. It looks like the hitch sits a little high due to the heat shield here, but this is thin, so we can just push it down as needed. At this point, we need to go ahead and install the hitch and the bumper cover at the same time. So definitely a good idea to have extra hands with this. Also, we're actually gonna zip tie the two pieces together, just hold it in place till we get our bolts in, and then we'll remove the zip ties. We got the two pieces zip tied together. Now we can see where we need to cut our foam so that everything rests nicely. Let's go ahead and reinstall the bumper structure and hitch. And it's a good idea to have the extra set of hands at this point to help put everything together. Now that we have our bumper structure loosely installed with the hitch, just by one factory bolt, we'll go ahead and install the rest of the hardware. We'll be using the factory bolt plus a conical tooth washer supplied with the hitch. Okay, once we have our bolts snugged down, we can go ahead and torque them down as specified in the instructions. Take a wire harness and push them back into place. I'm gonna take a little module, put it right back in this little spot. Before we put our bumper cover back into place, we're gonna show you that this, this center section right here has to be removed in order to use the, the drawbar and the hitch. Now I'm gonna show you how to remove it. It's pretty simple. There's two little clips here and here. When you push those in, we're gonna use a screwdriver here and then you can pop off the center section. All right, and we're good to go. At this point, we can go ahead and start reassembly of the bumper cover itself. Now we've got our vehicle off the lift, we'll go ahead and give you a couple of measurements to help you in selecting accessories for your hitch. From the ground to the top of the receiver opening is about 16 inches. And from the center of a hitch pin hole to the outside edge of a bumper, we'll say about six inches. And with that, that'll finish our install part number 11160 from Kurt on our 2010 Mini Cooper.